Tourists thought they saw sheep while traveling over the Arctic Ocean, but in fact, they saw something else. If this hadn't been filmed, no one would have believed it. We've spotted something unusual ahead, shouted one of the passengers, pointing toward the shore. Heads turned in unison, eyes straining against the pale horizon. Small white dots peppered the coastline, scattering across the rocky terrain like snowflakes on a barren landscape. Dr. Emma Frost gripped the railing of the MV Academic Schakalski, her heart racing. After a lifetime of studying polar bears, could this finally be her moment? Must be a flock of sheep, someone muttered, the words half swallowed by the wind that whipped across the deck of the ship. Emma's hopes plummeted. Of course it wasn't polar bears. It never was. From a distance, the white forms scattered along the rocky shore looked like nothing more than grazing animals, lazily milling about in the cold Arctic air. But as the ship inched closer, cutting through the choppy waves with a steady rhythm, the true nature of the gathering would become horrifyingly clear. These weren't sheep. They weren't grazing. And what they were doing would be seared into the minds of the onlookers forever, a memory that would haunt their dreams and change their understanding of the natural world. While everyone was busy watching the scene, Emma's mind had raced back to where her journey had begun 20 years earlier. At 18, Emma had been the youngest volunteer at the Arctic Research Station in Svalbard. Wide-eyed and bursting with enthusiasm, she'd arrived expecting to see polar bears roaming the snowy landscape. Instead, she found herself scrubbing floors and organizing data sheets. You have to earn your stripes here, kid, Dr. Johansson, the grizzled lead researcher, had told her. Polar bears don't just show up on command. Undeterred, Emma had thrown herself into her work. She devoured every piece of polar bear research she could find, staying up late into the Arctic nights, illuminated by the midnight sun. Weeks turned into months. Summer faded into the long polar night. Still, no bears. Maybe next season, the other researchers would say, patting her shoulder sympathetically. But next season came and went, and the one after that. Emma completed her undergraduate degree, then her PhD, all focused on polar bear behavior and conservation. She analyzed countless tracks in the snow, examined fur samples, and pored over satellite imagery. She became Dr. Emma Frost, respected polar bear expert with published papers and speaking engagements at prestigious conferences, all without ever seeing a live polar bear in the wild. Her colleagues started calling her ghost chaser behind her back. Emma pretended not to hear, but each whisper felt like a needle in her heart. Year after year, she returned to the Arctic, chasing rumors of sightings and following migration patterns. Antarctica, Greenland, Northern Canada. She visited them all, always a step behind, always too late. Now, at 38, Emma found herself on this expedition to Wrangell Island, her last hope. If she didn't see a polar bear here, in one of their last strongholds, she would have to face the possibility that her life's work had been in vain. The ship's horn blasted, jolting Emma back to the present. She blinked, refocusing on the shoreline ahead. The white dots were larger now, taking shape. As the ship approached, the excitement on deck was palpable. The cameras were ready and binoculars were pressed against eager eyes. The passengers had been briefed on the wildlife they might encounter. Arctic foxes, muskoxen, and if they were very lucky, maybe a glimpse of a polar bear or two. But what lay ahead defied all expectations. Emma's hands trembled as she raised her binoculars. The world narrowed to the circular view in her lenses. She adjusted the focus and suddenly, everything became crystal clear. Her breath caught in her throat. The binoculars slipped from her grasp, clattering to the deck. Oh my God, she whispered, her voice barely audible over the wind and waves. It soon became evident to every passenger on deck that there was no flock of sheep. Gasps rippled through the passengers, and a wave of disbelief and awe swept across the deck. Cameras clicked in rapid succession, recording every moment of this unprecedented sight. The white dots weren't sheep at all. They were polar bears, hundreds of them. The shocking scene unfolding before the ship's passengers sent shivers down their spines, a stark reminder of the untamed wilderness of this remote place. The Arctic, often viewed as a pristine, untouched wilderness, was revealing its harsh realities in a way that none of them had expected. As the passengers watched in awe at the raw power of nature, their shock slowly turned into a deep sense of humility. They realized they were just visitors in this vast, harsh world, where survival was ruled by ice and wind. It was especially true of their destination, Wrangell Island, a remote outpost that had survived the test of time and the harshest elements of the Arctic. The sight of so many polar bears was so unbelievable, so beyond comprehension, that even the guides, veterans of many Arctic expeditions, were stunned into silence. 
At least 230 polar bears crowded the shoreline, a seething, shifting mass of creamy white fur and black noses. The beach, normally a desolate stretch of rock and ice, had been transformed into a living carpet of bears. Mothers huddled protectively over cubs, their watchful eyes never leaving the approaching ship. Massive, solitary males prowled among them, their scarred muzzles and powerful shoulders a testament to the harsh life they led. Some bears stood on their hind legs, peering out at the ship like they were the ones watching the humans, curious about these strange intruders in their domain. What on earth? Emma whispered, breaking the tense silence that had fallen over the ship. The words seemed to hang in the air, giving voice to the collective shock and confusion of everyone on board. Emma's mind reeled. This was impossible. Polar bears were solitary creatures. They didn't gather in groups, let alone in numbers like this. Yet here they were, defying everything she thought she knew. Dr. Frost, Captain Alexei Volkov's voice boomed across the deck. What do you make of this? Emma turned to the grizzled Russian captain, her eyes wide with disbelief and wonder. After 20 years of chasing ghosts, she was finally face to face with the impossible. Captain, she said, her voice strong despite her racing heart, we're witnessing something that will change our understanding of the Arctic forever. The scene looked more like a gathering of predators preparing for some enormous hunt, but Emma knew that polar bears by nature are solitary creatures. They roam the vast Arctic wilderness alone, coming together only briefly to mate or when food is particularly abundant. Rarely do so many congregate in one place, and certainly not without a reason. A sense of foreboding swept over the tourists as they wondered what could have drawn this army of bears together. Then they saw it. The dark, massive shape half-submerged in the shallows, the unmistakable silhouette of a bowhead whale. The carcass, easily the size of a small ship, lay beached on the shore. Its once majestic form now serves as a macabre banquet table for the gathered bears. The carcass of the bowhead whale had washed ashore, a rare and unexpected bounty in the Arctic wilderness. These whales, known for their longevity and massive size, are not common visitors to these waters. Its presence here was a mystery in itself, but for the polar bears, it was an irresistible feast. The passengers on the MV Akademik Shokalski watched in stunned silence as the drama unfolded before them. Emma kept fumbling with cameras, desperate to capture every moment of this unprecedented event. She knew no one would believe her back home if she didn't bring back some kind of proof. She was not even sure she believed it herself. After years of hoping to see just one polar bear and being teased for it, she would return home with a story that defied imagination. Other passengers simply stared, their minds struggling to process the magnitude of what they were witnessing. Among the crowd, on deck, was also Dr. Sarah Lindstrom, a marine biologist specializing in Arctic ecosystems. Her trained eye took in every detail of the scene, her mind racing with the implications of what she was seeing. This is unprecedented, she murmured, her voice barely audible over the wind and the distant sounds of the feeding bears. In all my years studying polar bears, I've never seen anything like this. Later, as the tourists gathered to share their experiences over dinner, the same thought was voiced again and again. If this hadn't been filmed, no one would have believed it. The footage they captured of polar bears numbering in the hundreds, behaving in ways that defied everything they thought they knew, would soon spread across the globe, sparking heated discussions among scientists and conservationists alike. In the ship's dining room, animated conversations filled the air. Passengers shared photos and videos, their voices tinged with awe and disbelief. At the center of it all stood Dr. Emma Frost, still processing the magnitude of what she had witnessed. Captain Alexei Volkov raised his hand in silence. Dr. Frost, he said, his gruff voice softened by respect. Would you please address the group? Emma took a deep breath and stepped forward. Her hands trembled slightly, but her voice was steady. What we saw today, she began, is both extraordinary and deeply troubling. Polar bears are typically solitary animals. To see so many gathered in one place is a clear sign that their normal patterns of behavior are being dramatically disrupted. As she spoke, Emma could see the impact of her words on the faces around her. The excitement of the sighting was giving way to a sobering realization of its implications. In the weeks following the expedition, the footage of the polar bear spread across the internet like wildfire. News outlets picked up the story, running headlines like, if this hadn't been filmed, no one would have believed it. The tourists who had witnessed it firsthand became overnight celebrities in the wildlife community. They were invited to give interviews, share their photographs, and recount their experiences. For many, it was a surreal experience, finding themselves at the center of a scientific controversy they had never anticipated. The video, captured by several passengers on their smartphones, was grainy and shaky, but the content was unmistakable. 
Emma found herself at the center of a media storm. Her inbox overflowed with interview requests from major news networks, scientific journals, and even Hollywood producers interested in turning the expedition's story into a documentary. I never expected this level of attention, she confided to Sarah, her former student during a rare, quiet moment. But if it helps raise awareness about what's happening in the Arctic, then I have to seize this opportunity. As the story gained traction, it sparked heated debates in scientific circles and beyond. Some researchers questioned whether the incident was truly as unprecedented as Emma claimed, pointing to historical accounts of similar behavior during times of extreme food scarcity. Emma stood firm. She leveraged her years of research and the newfound public interest to advocate for urgent climate action. Environmental groups rallied around her, using the images of the gathered polar bears to illustrate the pressing need for change. However, Emma's newfound fame came with unexpected challenges. Climate change deniers targeted her, attempting to discredit her work and the significance of the Wrangell Island sighting. She received hate mail and even death threats, the vitriol a stark contrast to the beauty and sanctity of the Arctic she had witnessed. Despite the pressure, Emma persevered. She threw herself into writing a book about her experiences, determined to share the story of the polar bears with the world. In her rare, free moments, she found herself revisiting the video footage of the gathering, still awestruck by what she had seen. For Wrangell Island, long a forgotten corner of the earth, this was a moment of rediscovery. Governments and scientific institutions began discussing the possibility of mounting larger, more comprehensive expeditions to the island. Emma, however, approached these plans with caution. Wrangell Island is a sanctuary, she argued in a widely shared editorial. It's one of the last truly wild places on Earth. Yes, we must study it, but we also must protect it. The polar bears we saw gathered there are already under immense pressure from climate change. We cannot add to their struggles with careless human intervention. Her words carried weight, and she soon found herself advising on new guidelines for Arctic research and tourism, emphasizing the need for minimal impact observation. As months passed, Emma's journey evolved. From a scientist who had never seen a live polar bear in the wild, she had become a leading voice in Arctic conservation. The ghost chaser moniker that had once haunted her was now a point of pride, a reminder of her perseverance and the extraordinary discovery it had led to. One evening, as she prepared for yet another speaking engagement, Emma paused to look at a framed photo on her desk. It showed the Wrangell Island shoreline, dotted with hundreds of polar bears. The image still took her breath away. She traced her finger along the frame, remembering the feel of the Arctic wind on her face, the sense of insignificance in the face of nature's raw power. I see you, she whispered to the bears in the photo. And I promise, I'll make sure the world sees you too. As she turned to leave, Emma felt a renewed sense of purpose. The extraordinary gathering of polar bears on Wrangell Island hadn't just been the fulfillment of her lifelong dream. It had been the beginning of a new mission, one that would shape the future of the Arctic and perhaps the fate of its most iconic inhabitants. In the end, Dr. Emma didn't just witness an incredible natural event, she had unknowingly become part of a much larger story. Her journey had started as a simple expedition, a last ditch effort to see the creatures she had studied for so long. Instead, it had become a pivotal moment in our understanding of the natural world, with Emma at its heart, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead in her fight to protect the Arctic and its magnificent inhabitants. Have you ever witnessed a natural phenomenon that left you in awe and changed your perspective on the world? What would you do if you were one of the tourists on that Arctic cruise, suddenly faced with an unprecedented gathering of polar bears? Share your thoughts and reactions in the comments below and thank you for listening to this extraordinary tale of nature's surprises and the urgent need for environmental awareness. Join us for more intriguing stories like this one.